and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, are our Father, our Redeemer, you are named forever. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways and harden our hearts so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down with the mountains quaking before you, while you wrought awesome deeds we could not hope for, such as they had not heard of from of old. No ear has ever heard, no eye ever seen any God but you doing such deeds for those who wait for him. Would that you might lead us doing right if we were mindful of you in our ways. Behold, you are angry and we are sinful. All of us have become like unclean people. All our good deeds are like polluted rags. We had all withered like leaves and our guilt carries us away like the wind. There is none who calls upon your name who rouses himself to cling to you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us up to our guilt. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you the potter. We are all the work of your hands. The word of the Lord. Responsorial. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. O shepherd of Israel, hearken. From your throne upon the cherubim, shine forth. Rouse your power and come to save us. Lord, make us turn to you, let us to your face, and we shall be saved. Once again, O Lord of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Take care of this vine and protect what your right hand has planted, the Son of Man whom you yourself made strong. Lord, make us turn to you, let us to your face, and we shall be saved. May your help be with the man of your right hand, with the son of man whom you yourself made strong. Then we will no more withdraw from you. Give us new life and we will call upon your name. 
sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus, that in him you were enriched in every way with all discourse and all knowledge as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you were called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The Word of the Lord. two masses that day. Uh, we will begin on when, on Thursday night. I'm so used to saying Wednesday night at 6. Thursday night at 6 p.m. here at St. Thomas. And all of this will be in your bulletin. So Thursday night, 6 p.m. at St. Thomas. Then on Friday morning, We'll have the first Mass at 8 a.m. here at St. Thomas. Then I want to do something different, unexpected. We would normally have a night service that day at 6 p.m. I'm not going to do that this year. I'm going to move it to 12 noon at St. Bridget. That way, 
For those who are not comfortable with driving at night, it will give them an opportunity to come while it's still daylight and they don't have to wake up very early that morning. So it'll be Thursday night, 6 p.m. at St. Thomas, Friday morning, 8 a.m. at St. Thomas, and then 12 noon at St. Bridget. And that'll be for the Immaculate Conception this coming week. Now, we also have two other announcements that will be affecting us, and that are these, that on the 11th and the 12th, we will be decorating our churches for Christmas, St. Thomas at 6 p.m. on the 11th, St. Bridget at 6 p.m. on the 12th of December. So if you're able to come, please, we could use the help. Okay, thank you. And then lastly, on Friday, December the 15th, from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., the ladies of our parish will be hosting an event for the children of our parish. A night where they can come together, watch a couple of Christmas movies, have a celebration with fun, prizes, games, etc., food. And so they did, uh, the last couple of years they have done various things and they want to continue that because it's always been so well received. So if you would like to volunteer to help, you may call the rectory. If you, uh, the office, excuse me, uh, speak with Miss Bosarge, she heads this up and uh, you can speak with her. In fact, she's here tonight in the front row. You can head that up if you'd like. If you have children or grandchildren, it's open to all children, okay? So have them come as well, okay? They don't have to, quote, be a member of our parish or go to a Catholic school. If you want your children and grandchildren to come and have fun, bring them, okay? Pretty simple. Okay, I think that will conclude, as always, the first weekend of the month, and we have a second collection for our building and maintenance fund. Thank you for your continued generosity. Now, let us go on into our reflection. As long as man, be it the first man, Adam and Eve, be it some later generation, but as long as man has been able to draw breath and conceive a thought, man has posed him to himself various questions. And one of the questions that man has proposed is, what is my destiny? Or another way to say it, what is my purpose? And that has been a very significant question. And People have tried to answer it for generation upon generation. You've had philosophers, you've had kings, you've had theologians, you've developed various religions and various ideologies, all competing to try to find an answer, the answer. If we play off J.R.R. Tolkien, the one answer to rule them all. Tonight, I would like to throw my hat in the ring. Although the answer I will offer is not mine, it's not originally from me. It's a church answer posed by greater minds than mine early on in the church. And they said the purpose of man, our destiny, is union with God. Union with Jesus. Union with the child. The child that we wait expectantly for. For him to come again. The child who we honor during this Advent to Christmas season. The child that comes in the manger. 
union with this child, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, is our destiny, our purpose. Now, saying that in our country nowadays, and we are blessed, we live in the South. And that is truly a blessing because in other areas of our country, people, well, they've done a great disservice to their fellow men. They have managed to dissuade Christianity. Some have gone so far as to outright deny Christianity. And others who profess Christianity are mocked. How often have I heard people saying in a mocking fashion on the computer, they'll say, well, that is the standard Christian answer. You can't give any other answer than Jesus Christ. It's almost like we are some type of mind numb robot that we must respond to that answer. And they say, well, look, since he died so long ago and since we have no proof he is around, he's just your invisible friend. And as long as you have your invisible friend, you go on believing what you believe. But we who are educated, who are enlightened, we will profess different. Look, who are you going to believe? A church that stood for 2,000 years or some type of modern-day pseudo-intellectual who's in his 40s at most? I rest my case. But to a certain degree, when you listen to their mockery, their insults and ridicule. Instead of getting upset, I find that they do have a point. I don't need to turn on the world news and look at the behavior of Christians in other parts of the world. I can turn on the local news and look at the behavior of professed Christians be honest with you, I don't even have to go far out of the rectory and look at the behavior of a Christian. And I can question, if this is how a Christian behaves, man, I don't know about Christianity. So I can understand their point. Because if we are Christian, if we profess Christianity, if we say we're going to live by our Christian standards, our beliefs, then all of those direct us to the manger, to union with that child, the child. For in that moment, we understand what it means to be alive. For when we look at the manger, we see the child, we see God, the second person, the Trinity, who chose to humiliate himself and become like us in all things. God, and I mean this sincerely, humiliated himself. The creator takes the form of the creature and bears with everything that we creatures have to bear with. He becomes hungry and tired and thirsty as we do. He laughs, he cries as we do. He has that need for sleep as we do. He has the need for companionship as we do. All of our weaknesses save sin, he chose to take upon himself. 
when he chose to offer himself to his father by first becoming like us. Now, we honor that first coming during Advent. But it's not enough. Because if we were to honor it as a Christian honors it, then we would say, I want to be like that child. I want to join myself to that child, the Son of God. And so I too must take on that childlike persona, that childlike innocence, as we spoke about it today, early in the Bible study. To take on that childlike innocence means to be able to, in a small way, see everyone as a child sees them. And when we go to a kindergarten class, if you ever have the pleasure of going to visit the kindergartners, I did as a, the priest at a Catholic school. And you see the kindergartners and how they act and react to each other. Do you ever notice they treat everyone as friend? They don't see each other by race, by gender, by creed. Those things we teach them as adults. As children, they don't see that. They see friend. That's that persona we need to take on. But to do that, to self-sacrifice as Jesus did, we also have to do it with a clear mind. And that's the one thing that we never reflect upon enough is what Jesus knew. People will speculate. Well, did he know about airplanes? Did he know about nuclear physics? There was no need. I mean, let's face it. Jesus didn't have a need to, uh, to develop the atom bomb in his time. But he did have a knowledge of something. A knowledge that we have to come to accept as Christians. The knowledge he has was the knowledge of rejection. He knew that his choice to offer himself up to the Father would entail rejection. We can read about that in his life. How disciples would walk away from him the end of the sixth chapter of St. John's Gospel, after preaching that beautiful bread of life discourse, saying, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life within you. My flesh is real food, my blood is real drink. And it said some of his disciples walked away. And he allowed that. He knew that he would be rejected. And we think of the ultimate rejection, not only of the people of Israel through the chief priests, the scribes, the Pharisees. We think of those closest to him, his apostle Judas. But that rejection does not end with his passion, death, and resurrection. That rejection of Jesus continues even to our day. It's easy to point fingers and say, well, look at those people over there. But yet, as we always know, I can point one finger at another, but I have three pointing back at me. For we too reject Jesus when we choose to sin, when we choose to make everything about us, our needs, our pleasures. Part of that self-sacrifice is to know I am choose to reject or to, to detach from other things but at the same time as I choose to detach myself from things or individuals that separate me from the love of God I know 
and choose that if that means rejection by the world, whatever the world is, society, whatever society is, then I choose, willfully choose to accept that. That is the self-sacrifice that we are all called to join with in union with that child. For to be with Jesus, and God, I wish, I truly, sincerely wish I could offer you a one-time blanket statement as some other denominations may offer and say, if you just do one thing, this thing, then everything is covered. I wish I could do that. But 2,000 years of church history <coughs> tells me it's not possible. For 2,000 years of church history tells me that men and women continue to reject Jesus no matter how many times we say we love him. We continue to fall. Ergo, the need for reconciliation, confession. But all this culminates with one big thing. Choice. I and you must choose to start that process of unification here on earth. We must choose to start uniting ourselves to him here today on earth so that whenever our time does come, we will already be in union with him as we move on to the next life. But that choice is one that can always be stopped by fear. Fear of what the choice entails. Fear of what self-sacrifice to God entails. <clears throat> Might I offer you this thought? Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. No matter what he asks of us, when we sacrifice ourselves to him, he will never require nor ask for something he cannot, he will not provide us with first. If he wants you to offer yourself in a way, it might be as simple as learning patience then he will already provide you with the means to grow in patience. He will never assign something to you that you cannot overcome with his assistance and grace. He will never ask anything of you that you are certain to fail at. Whenever the thoughts and the fears of Arise saying, oh God, if I give, if I choose, then be assured, put those to the side. Return to Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. And realize, everything is there, it's provided for. All we have to do is sacrifice and detach and it'll be okay. We may not grow up to be powerful on this earth. We may not grow to have great wealth upon this earth. We may not have fame upon this earth. But self-sacrifice is not about this earth. Union with Jesus is not about union here on earth. So, I leave you with that to ponder. May Almighty God be with you, may you bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>
God for God, light for light, true God for true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate with the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the cross. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I the defense of baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Coming together as one family in faith, we offer to God our prayers and our needs. And we pray for our Holy Father, for our Archbishop, for all priests, religious brothers, sisters, permanent deacons, and seminarians who pray for the Lord. Lord. We pray for those who are sick or suffering in any way from our parish family and those who care for the sick and suffering. We pray for the Lord. Lord. We pray for the needs of our brothers and sisters who are unable to be here this night, those who will watch this Mass on video. We pray for the Lord. We pray for Frank Cote, for whom this Mass is being offered this night. We pray for the Lord. Offering all our prayers to the Father. Let us conclude asking Mary, the Mother of God, for her assistance as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Jesus Christ, bread of life, number 321 in our missalette on page 329. <laughs>
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. For to the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Except we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your heart. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed in his first coming the lowliness of human flesh. And so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones, dominions, and with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory is without end, we acclaim. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. 
together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessing of Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed with children, with spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs of eternal life, we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Who deal mine with you, mine in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. <laughs>
Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The mass is in. Go in peace. Do you mind having a seat just for a second? At this time, our ushers will take up our second collection for our building and maintenance fund. Thank you for what you do. Now, as they take that up, the other night, we were on Wednesday night speaking about the Mass. And I don't know, some of the people Wednesday night were not familiar. I do not know if you're familiar. But we don't have music at communion time. It gives you a moment to just be quiet and pray afterwards. But people ask, what should we pray? Is there a particular prayer that we could pray? In your missalette, in the back, on page 396, is a beautiful prayer that one would typically say after communion, called the Anima Christi. That is a beautiful prayer. So when you return to your pews, you could always pull the missalette out and pray that prayer, and that is a great way to cap off your receiving of Holy Communion, okay? Y'all have a great night tonight. Thank you. And now let us stand in prayer, our prayer to St. Michael. Holy Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power, for us into heaven, Satan and all the other evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The divine praises. Blessed be God. Blessed be the Lord. Thank you. 